Hello and welcome to Legally Speaking with me, Tarun Nangia. The new CBDT chairman, Mr. Nitin Gupta, has taken over and made some very important announcements. One of the first things that he said after taking over is that the taxpayer is our key stakeholder. They are the centerpiece. And with that in mind, we have issued some SOPs for compliance by officers in the faceless regime. So for the faceless scheme that the income tax department started, they have issued some SOPs. He also said that there could be some glitches, but we will eventually overcome and be able to provide better service. So that is why we got two eminent chartered accountants to come and give inputs so that in his new tenure, uh, what are the suggestions from the chartered accountant community and what are the inputs from the business community as a whole, which are very important feedback mechanism. And also to congratulate, of course, Mr. Gupta, he starts his tenure. So we'll do one show and he ends his tenure and see what all has been done. And, you know, on the achievements, we can uh, do that. So this is a starting journey in that area. We always been doing it uh, for the courts, for the Supreme Courts, we do that. Uh, but now even for CVDT, we have started. So this is a start of an interesting journey. And I have two very interesting people joining me here. I have with me S. Ravi, who's founder of Ravi Rajan and Company. Good to see you again after a long time and looking forward to some interesting interventions. I have welcome also Rakesh Nangia, who's chairman of Nangia Anderson. And he's kind enough to give us time. He's traveling abroad, but uh, on a call uh, when I requested, he was kindly consented to join us. Good to see you, Mr. Nangia. And at the outset, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, when I requested, uh, when I called you, Mr. Ravi, requesting for this interview, you were very excited. You said that uh, such a dialogue where we could give inputs and, you know, we could share uh, the some of uh, you, the suggestions uh, is very welcome. And uh, can you open the show uh, with uh, first uh, about uh, Mr. Nitin Gupta, who is the CBDT chairman now, and also what all can be done so that Make in India, Invest in India, and the business community is infused with positivity because... I understand from my experience that when tax structures are simple, when compliance is simpler, and when cases takes less time to dispose of, the confidence of the businessmen to invest in that country increases. This is what the prime minister wants. So your opening comment on that. So uh, first of all, thank you, Tarun, for inviting me to the show. And uh, I would like to first uh, wish Mr. Nitin uh, uh, all the best for his honor. We are expecting a lot from him. He has come from the department. He knows the ins and outs. He is part of the investigation. So he knows everything about the department. And also he has made a good start in terms of issuing SOPs. And this is very crucial because SOPs are going to be the guidelines for the officers to act. And there are some key areas. For example, the uh, uh, appeals, the time taken for appeals. So, as you rightly stated, you know, the, and Mr. Gupta also stated that uh, SSEs are the stakeholders and its taxpayers are the uh, stakeholders. So, it is very important to have a very good communication with the uh, SSEs. See, when a person goes for an appeal, he does not know the status at any point of time till he hears a final whatever comes. So, pipeline status for them whether the assessing officer is or whoever is assessing has assessed it or there is still three months away or two months away. I think that status is very, very important because it brings the confidence to the SSE. He's not waiting for a mail every day, whether the assessment appeal has been accepted or not. So that is a very key thing. The two-way communication between the department and the SSE is very important. The second is the disposal. So if there are five, six uh, issues, uh, between the SSC and the tax, uh, and the tax department. If there are three, four simple ones, one should close this and send them a letter that there is a there is a difference of opinion with the fourth or the fifth issue. So that makes it very easy for the SSC also because he gets the confidence that the department is uh, is in harmony with them. They they are reaching out to them. So that is a very very important uh, thing uh, with uh, as far as I am concerned. And this process should be shortened a better communication between the taxpayer and the department is, is a must. And I think it, this is, in, and government has done very well by introducing faceless, but faceless does 
not mean just uh, going away from everywhere. So I think that communication is a very, very important aspect. The third thing is also from the department viewpoint, we must uh, distinguish between a person who's doing tax evasion and a person who has made a technical mistake or a technical interpretation. And that is the key. And that SOP will be very, very important in my view as we take it forward. These are my opening remarks. There are other things to come, but, uh, but also uh, the fourth thing before I uh, hand it over to Ms. Nangia is that we should have, suppose there's a technical difference. There is a facility for Zoom, etc. But why not a video presentation, even if it is sent through video or a presentation, need not be a two-way dialogue, but at least explaining the whole thing. That is a very important thing. And uh, for investors uh, to be in India, to, uh, for the uh, bigger players to be in India, to all, especially the middle uh, level of businessmen to be in India. So thanks, that is thanks, my... Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for that encouraging opening comment. And one thing I like about you, you come up with ideas. Uh, that is something which is well appreciated because it is one thing to comment on some action initiated, but other thing to come up with ideas, which is one key thing that do. I'll go to Mr. Rakesh Nangia. The CBDT earlier this month issued a set of internal guidelines uh, for income tax department assessing officers to remove or reduce the procedural errors in the faceless process. And the department has completed over close to 3 lakh faceless uh, assessments in this period in 1920. Uh, I want to understand from you uh, two things. A, the tax department gets no credit for doing its work well. I'll tell you why. Secretaries in various ministries inter introduce schemes for getting investments in India. The Commerce Ministry also does its work. A lot of departments are credited, but the tax department is never spoken in terms of being an investment driver into, into India. That is, the tax is efficient, money will flowing. How do you devise a mechanism where it is quantified and incentivized? Where if a particular year, the tax system, even faceless, is simplified and businessmen are happy, of course, money will flow in because you have that experience. Can you share that with us? A, on the policy front where tax is never appreciated for its contribution that it is seen as something you do it's a uh, it's it's a job where which is work intensive but nothing to do with interface with investments could you share that angle with us also so tarun thank you so much just to give you first the background actually maybe yes. the background is essential see what is the status today as tax revenue is concerned see current year figure few days figure back 35% growth in the tax revenue that has taken place till uh, last month. This is huge figure, 35% growth. See the number of SSCs which have grown up. Today, India has 8.22 crores tax SSCs. Now, we used to talk about 1%, 2% few years back. Now, today, 8.22 is something very laudable, actually. Let, let's put like this thing. Third, very interesting part, which you mentioned about it, let me tell you, the changes that has come in the department and when you bring the changes, there's a good side, there's a bad side and everybody can never be happy about it. And I give you a very interesting matter about the faceless part. You will be surprised India is the only country in the world which has a faceless scheme where uh, SSC does not know who the tax officer is. In the world, you have an assessment, e-assessment. They are done by electronic medium, but you know who is your tax officer. So India is the only country, is one of the most daring steps ever taken in the, I can say, the world, where you are shooting in the dark at times, you don't know who is your tax assessor. He's there. there were humongous challenges that came in the beginning part of it, and government did came up with the SOPs, government improved it gradually and made it friendly where there was a challenge. And today, even today, after all these challenges, the few challenges still remain. And through this medium of view, I like the tax office. Yes, if they address that, it would be one of the most wonderful things as having a faceless scheme is concerned. And I can tell you a very interesting part. Majority of the people, they're happy with faceless. They don't need to go to the tax office. They can work 24 by 7. They can file the papers. There are no standing queues are there. No, it's the majority of the cases. There. But a couple of things important, which I can say in the program right now. Let's say there's a particular industry you may be assessed in Chandigarh, you may be addressed in Chennai, you may be addressed there. The government must into to have a specialized assessing officer dealing with certain industry. So you become an excellence, you create a center of excellence in that industry in the tax assessment. And then there's a consistent position being taken all over the country. 
right? Rather than every state, you have a different city, you have a different position be taken away. So once you create a center of excellence, you'll find a consistent order. You'll find a speaking order. You'll find a reasoned order. So this will change the paradigm shift is concerned. One of the important parts is there where you are able to have a special people are concerned. No, anybody, second part of you, anybody who, who takes away money, tax is never friendly. Nobody wants to pay the taxes, whether direct tax or indirect taxes. And if the government takes away any tax component, no one is happy about it. So, but what you can do, you must realize, and this realization is down everywhere now, tax is the biggest contributor of revenue to the government, whether it's a direct tax or indirect tax. It's a worldwide issue. It's not taxes are in the, it's everywhere in the world you have a tax is there. But how you administer the taxes, how friendly your policies are there, how friendly you are proactive in disposing of the matters, how friendly you listen to the challenges being faced by the SFC in the tax office. This is something which can make your index higher and on ease of doing business in terms of taxes concerned. So, but I can tell you one thing, there's a shift, there's a paradigm shift. Every person in the world knows they have to pay the taxes. And every person has a right under the law to minimize it within the four boundaries of law is concerned. So you feel there are people who still hesitate not to pay taxes, but it is dawn now. People are okay, happy because they don't want nuisance, they don't want a burden. Global companies coming in the world, majority coming from the West country, they know they have to pay the taxes and they do pay the taxes. So it's a mixed bag. But I think in my personal opinion, people don't want, they want to pay taxes. They Thank don't Thank want you. the headaches. So long as legitimate, easy to governance and the data. Thank you for that opening comment. Uh, uh, I will go across to S. Ravi and uh, I see a very interesting book on your, the bookshelf behind you. It is called The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. And uh, uh, you know, the wealth of nations comes primarily through business enterprise and the taxations that the government can then collect. That's why the treasury is filled. So I want to ask you something that... Uh, Mr. Gupta said that he is facing some challenges. The CBDT chairman said that there are some pressing human resource issues. Uh, timely promotions are an issue. Getting the right work avenues are an issue. And these are the internal issues of the department and they are trying their best. But we also know for a fact that the CBDT chairman tenures are not long. So the ability to push through reform, you know, you know, one person comes, he works with his full intent and by the time he retires, the next person has another idea about the same thing. How could continuity of reforms be ensured? Do you think that there should be a committee of the next two, three CBDT chairmen who are likely to be appointed? Generally, it's not known. But if there is a succession line, do you think human resource issues can be sorted better? So from a policy perspective, we are very consistent. For example, faceless. Uh, all that part is very clear. But when it comes to administration, there is there are challenges because there are human beings of various capabilities. And, you know, capabilities are not uniform. Yes. And, and, the, and the intent also is not uniform. And also the deliverability is not uniform. So as Mr. Nagia said, experts of each area, uh, because why, where is the gap? The gap is because the SSE and the tax a department, there is a difference of opinion. And that di a difference of opinion can be bridged through excellence only. And it is important for the new CBTD chairman to identify the best performing people, the people who understand. And there are many people who just uh, do their job mechanically. And I think the whole HR of the CBTD needs to be uh, sort of changed. Coming to the continuous change, what happens is uh, because the department itself makes the CBTD chairman, so there is a bit of continuity. It is not that it is totally uh, the, the policies are opposite of the other uh, because the same person would have ser uh, served as a member, as a, as a commissioner. And, you know, so they come from the department. They see uh, the, uh, the, the chairman, the, but importantly for the chairman, he must make and identify a group of 30, 40 strong, good officers who are likely to come to the next level. Instead of a committee which is external, which, which has no uh, great control, internal administration where you identify 30, 40 talented people who are there, who get fast-track promotion, who, who can take CBTD to the next level, that is what is very important. And identifying the talent, 
those who have done the job those who are technically equipped those who are ready to take decisions and that is what is the key and i think that uh, that should be done as quickly as possible by the cbdt chairman a very quick follow up question before i go to mr rakesh nangya i was researching for this show i came across an article authored by cyril shroff managing partner and rishab shroff who's the partner uh, of cyril amarshan mangaldas they gave some statistics that 8000 high net worth individuals uh, are expected to leave india by 2022 which is the end of this year and a staggering 390000 indians have renounced citizenship in the past 3 years and they went to friendly jurisdictions like uae portugal greece malta and they made a very interesting point they have relocated in their their citizenship but they continue to stay in india their businesses are in india only their citizenship is non indian so they make money in india their employees are in india many times their families in india but they are not indian citizens now how do we, why this phenomenon is suddenly uh, you know you see this happening and what can be done to stop this that you know you you want to do business in india you make money here but you are not an indian citizen how do you get across this is this done, is this done for a stronger passport why are businessmen doing this so first of all let us uh, clear this perception uh, having a passport externally and having a residential status for income tax is that are two different things and i think people are mixing it up absolutely mixing it up what if i have got a cyprus citizenship but still i have business in india i have to pay taxes here so this this uh, uh, this Uh, misnomer which is there has to be sort of communicated to the ssc's very strongly and i think we should also dialogue with a few people who are why why are they going to do this why what is their constraint i think that is a very important feedback mechanism that we should do it's a more of a perception issue than an actual issue you mean that they is are also- taking they, they are giving citizenship based on perception not that it makes any difference to the compliances that they have to do absolutely second point very very important is as i mentioned feedback the second point is very very important is why are they doing this what is the root cause of uh, this because maybe they feel that the taxation is higher let us do an analysis of not where people are migrating and what is the advantage they are getting good idea if you look at if you look at the advantage they are getting it will be nullified in the long run absolutely so their stay cost suppose somebody has shifted to malta as you said the stay cost is going to increase their business is in india so people are actually there is a communication gap here and people are not able to understand this so Point. once we deliver faster quicker uh, uh, sort of uh, refunds faster assessments faster disposal of appeals and give them the confidence let me also make a very fine point and i'm just transgressing into something gst which is just a 5 year old thing there were glitches in that and due to that there were lot of triggers it is not because of income tax only so people have got lot of notices the gst uh, uh, rules itself people feel arrest at uh, the arrest is a very important thing so all this is also uh, causing this in fact and you I gave me you gave me a topic for my next show thank you mr raj uh, on the gst <laughs> so, so 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 what is happening is so it is not income tax alone cannot be the reason so let us uh, so root cause analysis why are they going i think we should get to them understand and that is where there is a lack of dialogue and that is what i think we should focus on thank you because thank india you. has a great avenue and india people are making out money out of india but why should they take a citizenship which has no meaning that's a, that's an important point you shared with us thank you for that perspective uh, mr uh, rakesh nangiya your input on the very same question i just have to add one thing tax is not the only or solitary reason for people to move out of india is concerned like mr ravi also said the same thing right it is a host of issues and the biggest host if you are a businessman is the ease of doing business as a complete ecosystem is concerned right so if you say people are moving only because of tax i think you'll be on a very low on the bucket list as could be one of the reason but not the main dominant factor for leaving the country is concerned you may have a global business you may have a regional presence i may be exporting 80% of my products to usa i don't want to live in india i want to live in a friendly jurisdiction and rightly you see that till you do not shift your operations it doesn't make a sense you're paying taxes in india you're giving an employment you're getting a gdp you're manufacturing you're exporting everything is as in india so 
yes it's important to know why people are leaving so that you can take a corrective and diagnose once you have a diagnosis diagnostic then you can take a corrective action and only thing which is really little troubling is a little higher status people moving who are doing a lot of big businesses people are moving so why should they leave it and this little bit of corrective action maybe i think maybe government should look into this and we should come out with some reason why it is happening so i agree with the thing people are moving we are fully aware of that uh, and we are clear about it but yes it needs to be known it needs to be known but if they doing they are not doing for tax purpose i can tell you that they are not doing solely for tax purpose no so not not just only for it may be just one of the components in the whole scheme of things yes 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 okay okay so we'll uh, i think we come to a close of our show now we'll move to uh, uh, the round of final comments uh, i'll go to mr s ravi for his final comment and you know uh, mr nitin gupta has taken over the tenure is not very long so it's not that you can do too much uh, but uh, what do you think uh, 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 you would wish him in his tenure wish him first that he builds the confidence of the taxpayers very important the 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 trust deficit that exists with whatever little trust deficit between the taxpayer and the and the department should be bridged and there are many measures which includes communication and i think that is the key second i wish that he brings in more efficiency into his, his own uh, system by identifying 50 60 people who are a successors and there should be a very strong succession plan that is the key then the third thing is the interdepartmental for example gst and other tax other departments revenue departments there should be a good alignment where we we come across and so what happens is there is a there is a problem of gst there is a problem of income tax there could be a common problem somewhere so i think it's very important to eradicate that and solve it and i think that is very very important the same thing which is right in income tax could be wrong in gst so i think that that is that uh, gap needs to be bridged uh, that is my pick. the last but not the least i have a suggestion and that's a so in, during covid times lot of pe- people had to change residential status who were non resident became resident because of lockdown flight also there is a little bit of ambiguity that though the department has clarified but there are multiple cases there and that that shakes the confidence of people because that was a genuine reason somebody was in the hospital for two months not not anybody could do much about it there is an ex, there is a exemption available but what happened people were not aware of it they were ignorant of it so a second opportunity should be given to clear all those cases not genuine cases i'm not talking of malafide issues but genuine cases there should be an opening so that these type of notices uh, should be this thing now one last suggestion giving notice should be done by a committee committee every no yeah every notice that is issued should have the approval of certain uh, senior people and that is the key because what will happen when you issue a notice you are issuing a notice based on certain inputs so my judgment could be wrong so if two three people look at the same thing then it becomes a very important aspect i think this is a very transformational suggestion that i am making but i think two people or three people getting together and taking care of a notice is very important just i should not singularly have a power of just issuing a notice that's that's Because, a fair point uh, let's see what happens on uh, that is is it taken note of or is it but uh, thanks you sharing that perspective uh, uh, mr rakesh langia your closing comment for the day so one uh, important thing is the root cause one of the, one of the tenure i think is very important you see there are a lot of departments where the government has given a fixed tenure for the head of the department so to make it a little consistent and be sure we there for one year two year about the government it decide is the right thing the chairman or the head of the department must be given a minimum of fixed tenure so that he can follow a consistent policy he can take his agenda to the public and to the taxpayer and meet those expectations of the taxpayer so this is one of the things which we need to really look into that second one important thing i want to tell you, there should be a committee of experts government should make some independent experts to come in come out with a plan tell the government position tell this is my admitted position the government with more clarity so that i as a taxpayer i know where is my risk my liability my exposure and my obligations so here at experts committee to admit and give the government view basically it will really help in reducing 
unwanted litigation is concerned. One important thing I want as an improve the ecosystem is concerned for our chairman is there. Like if you file an appeal before commission of income tax, Tarun, it may come in two years, three years, four years. I think there should be some sort of a time limit where the government may decide to uh, appeal before the commissioner, like in DRP, their tenure is nine months. It should be disposed of in nine, uh, 12 months, 18 months, depending on the resources available, but it should not be open-ended. This will help in disposing of the pendency and uh, dependency of the appeal is concerned. So my last is this, let me tell you something, <clears throat> with a message to everybody, tax has gone for complete change. There's a paradigm shift now today. Government have umpteen, umpteen matter in collection of every information about every taxpayer. You are logged in in the ledger accounts of the government of India in the taxpayer today. Internally, externally. Exchange of information is there with more than 75 to 100 countries today. Every bank account, every investment is getting parked up. Every foreign country you withdraw is get, every cash withdrawal you do is goes to your ledger account. Every trading of shares, every buying, every selling, every debenture, everything is, is locked on with the government account today. So please be a compliant citizen today. You have no way you're, you're being, government has information about you. This is what I want to tell you. You need to be a compliant person today. That is what I want to say. A message to my taxpayer. Thanks. Thanks for sharing uh, these perks, perspectives, uh, both of you, Mr. Uh, Ravi, uh, S. Ravi and Mr. Rakesh Nangya. It's very important uh, to take up these issues every time when a new CBDT chairman takes over because uh, all of these people uh, with positive intent in mind, you know, when somebody takes up the pole position, he sits at the top of the totem pole of the tax apparatus of a country which is has one forty six crore people. I mean, what could be more prestigious? Yes. You are sitting at the top of this position. You get this opportunity. A lot of people join the IRS. You have to be, in a sense, blessed by God to be sitting there. Is. And then you get the opportunity to change lives and change the system. I think Mr. Nitin Gupta has got that opportunity. And he started with making some announcements. We will track them. We will follow and we will do some shows yes. to, as we go out. But I would like to thank both my panelists for sparing time and joining us and viewers for tuning into the show. Thank you so very much. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.